Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this new episode of CX Punk Chat. I remember to you guys the philosophy of this video blog, which is pure punk nature. We want to promote individual freedom and anti-establishment view in the customer experience world. The format is quite easy. It's one-to-one. -one. It means one guest, two questions for one challenging customer management topic. And our guest, Today is Michael Brand, and uh, uh, I'm really happy to have Michael uh, today here. Wel welcome, Michael. Hi, Federico. <laughs> Hi. And uh, Michael is a customer experience specialist, is the founder of CXExcellence.com. Uh, uh, um, is also one of the member founder of the European Customer Experience Organization, and uh, he has uh, eight years. Uh, he was eight years in charge of uh, customer experience as vice president, global vice president, customer experience at ABB. And uh, moreover, he recently moved to Lugano, Switzerland, which is my own uh, city, own, own town. And, uh, you know, we chat a little bit before. He's extremely happy and I can understand him because this is lovely Ticino with a lot of sun. Yeah. Um, today, I want to take advantage of Michael expertise in B2B and, uh, you know, ask him uh, two specific questions uh, in that area. But First of all, Michael, tell, tell us a little bit uh, about you and what basically pushed you to be so passionate uh, in, uh, in customer experience. Uh, you know, I, I, I read always a lot of, uh, you know, articles uh, and comments. Uh, sometimes we are not on the same, <laughs> on the same Maybe, page, yeah. but this is a, a different story. Tell us about uh, your, uh, your passion about yeah. customer experience. Sure, well, thanks for having me, uh, Federico. Uh, I, I worked for uh, for ABB for 25 years in uh, in various customer related functions. At the beginning, in uh, technology transfer, and then as head of a business unit in in, in Japan, and then working uh, with quality management and and the ABB customer experience program and complaint management. And, and I think the time that really, really got me sold on customer experience was the seven years that I spent in Japan. Uh, the Japanese are known for their customer focus. And the seven years that we, that we spent in Japan was an absolute eye-opener when it came to customer experience. The whole focus on the customer um, is, is absolutely amazing. And, and this really demonstrated to me how easy it is actually to be customer oriented without impacting negatively on on, on cost or, uh, or or results and so this for me was was really a conversion moment and and, and from the time that i spent in japan then it was clear to me that the customer experience was was going to be an important part of of my um role going forwards and uh, and so that's basically the 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 outset you know the the jumping point for my for my uh, passion for, for customer experience okay thank you michael and uh, you mentioned you know you, you spend time in japan you you work for uh, for abb, uh, ABB and yeah. uh, and basically um you know what what is a very hot topic at the moment uh, in, in the customer experience management area is really this difference between, you know, uh, B2C uh, customer experience and, and B, B2B. Can you tell us a little bit, uh, in your opinion, what, what is what are or is the difference between between the sure. customer experience management process? Sure, absolutely. Well, obviously, you know, at, at ABB we were dealing with with you know large ticket items, big installations, and when you the whole purchasing process, first of all, is completely different. Uh, B two C generally, you're dealing with individual consumers, maybe a, a, a partners, you know, in 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 a household, they want to buy a TV or something like that, and and it, it revolves a lot around their personal requirements, uh, cost, easy, e easy purchase process, things like that. The, the decision is very often an emotional one. When it comes to B2B, the, the purchasing process is, is completely different, especially if you're looking at, at large ticket items. 
you're not actually selling it to one person, you're selling it to a group of people. Within the, the, the customer, you have different levels of, of, of uh, influence, if you like. You have the people that are making decisions, you have the people that are influencing the people that are making decisions, and you have people who might be using the equipment who, who discuss it in the canteen and, and basically give that piece of equipment the reputation within the company. So when you're looking at, at the customer experience from a B2B perspective, you're basically looking at how can I cover all the bases? How can I convince the people who are um, making the reputation for that piece of equipment within the company? How can I get them to, to, to influence the influencers that are then going to provide the decision makers with the basis for which the, the, the company is going to make their buy or not buy uh, decision. And, and so this is really, uh, it's, it's drawn out, it's longer, it takes longer, but it also requires a lot more effort on the, on the part of the supplier because they really have to work these three different segments in, uh, in order to make sure that they get the, get the business. So, so I would say this is probably the, the, the main difference. Yeah. But of course, you also have, you know, the, the, the reputation for a product is also made over the life cycle. So when you're talking to companies, they're looking at what is this piece of equipment going to cost me over its lifetime? What are the service costs? What is the support? What available support is there? How quickly is the supplier going to be to respond uh, how long is my piece of equipment uh, going to remain idle while they, while they come to fix it? And, and, and this life, lifetime support is important because it, when it comes to replace that piece of equipment, uh, then the company is going to look at the track record and say, okay, how do we do? Do we really want to go with the same people? Do we want to replace this piece of equipment with a piece of equipment from the uh, uh, same supplier? Or is it now time to jump ship and go with somebody else because our experience hasn't been that good. So, so it really is um, a, a much longer process and one which needs um, a lot more persistence and, and, and perseverance. If I, if I understood very well your explanation, uh, and also I bring in a little bit experience I had also discussing with other, with other people in, in the B2B. So probably, the first big, uh, uh, let's say, big problem or problem or uh, opportunity, let's say, is uh, to manage the experience uh, on, on a group of people. So you need to have a proper segmentation in place uh, in order to identify to which segment, uh, you know, your counterpart uh, at that precise moment uh, uh, belong to, in a way that then you can, uh, you can manage, uh, uh, you know, the, the experience according. Absolutely. It's correct, yeah. Michael. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's Critical. clear. But then when you go really, you know, and you, and you try to implement in reality this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this uh, methodology to B2B, um, what, what is your ex experience? What are your, your suggestion or, or, you know, best practices uh, you, you, can, uh, you can tell us about? I think one of, the, one of the really important things and one which is very often forgotten because people tend to be uh, instinctive. They rely on their, their gut feeling. Um, they say, well, I think this, this is the way it is. One thing that's really important is, is to look at the customer journey and, and say, okay, what is the, the journey for this particular customer from A to Z, right? What are the touch points? Uh, what are the customer, and this requires a lot of knowledge, customer knowledge. What are the customer's expectations, right? what are we doing wrong? How can we fix it? How do we prioritize the, 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 the fix to, to really make sure that you can take the actions that are necessary along that journey to make it a seamless uh, experience for the customer. So, so, so it, it, it requires excellent customer knowledge and, and then a really 
uh, in-depth view at the customer journey. Uh, and this is looking at from, from the customer's perspective, not from the company's perspective. That's another mistake that's often made. Um, and, and to see you know, where the touch points are, where the pain points are, and how those can be eliminated. Because that is the first way to ensure that you get the customer on side if, if there's a seamless and an easy process. Wow, this is a lot of information. But just another question, uh, Michael, because the, the discussion is getting interesting and okay. interesting <laughs> minutes after minutes. You mentioned customer and you mentioned company. So, and of course, we are considering customer journey. So, the complexity is we have the customer journey, we have the objective of the companies in general, or uh, let's say the, the objectives of the customer journey for the, co the companies. But then, uh, and if I well understood that when you, when you um, define customer, you define the single people uh, in, uh, in the company, you need, you need also to understand the customer journey according to the customer in, in which position is seated in the organization and to which segments belongs. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's a, it's, it's a very complex, uh, it's a very complex process. Yeah. yeah. It's um, much, it, it's much very... complex than the usual, uh, you know, customer experience of, exactly. of one individual. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And, and I think this is a thing with B2B, but the, the, there are, I mean, if you look at, at, at the whole B2B, at the stakeholders, who have you got? You've got, um, you, you've got the people that actually use the equipment, but you've got the purchasing people. You've got the, the, the technical people. Right with it within the company, let's say, and all these uh, various segments or, or, or types of people, types of stakeholders, will have their interests and and, and their expectations and their requirements, and, and really, in order to be a hundred percent successful, you have to take all these into account and see, okay, how can we manage this? How can we bring this uh, uh, under one roof and and really offer these people what they're looking for? Wow, this is uh, absolutely fantastic, uh, Michael. Because it's a it's a very it's a very uh, I think straight uh, and um, on, on one side simple way to explain you know the the B two B, but uh, you know um, of course it's extremely complex compared you know managing uh, the single uh, the single uh, uh, customer experience of uh, you know consumers let's say yes, consumers. Yeah, yeah. So um, thank you very much for your time uh, michael My and pleasure. um yeah i'm i'm happy um uh, that uh, you participate in in this video blog and uh, i suggest uh, whoever is interested in b2b customer experience to get in touch with michael michael run his own uh, consulting business and uh, i think you are really focused in in b2b correct absolutely uh, yes, michael that's, that's yeah. my focus area so, yeah. Feel free to contact him on uh, on LinkedIn, and uh, and basically he will be happy, uh, you know, to sell, of course, <laughs> advice uh, advice uh, in B two B. Thanks a lot, uh, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we will have a new episode in in fifteen days, so stay tuned. Another another guest, and thanks again, uh, Michael. Thank you, Federica. <laughs>